Hey guys, it's Jeff with Red Plaid Films here, and today I want to talk about my method for organizing and editing an event video. So event videos can be various different lengths, but this is my typical file structure for a finished event video. I'll have assets, which are things like transitions or overlays, uh, in this case grain that I didn't really quite use, but um, all in all, everything is kind of buried into here and then sound effects which is anything I'd use to kind of help enhance the video uh, build will be anything that um, anything that I build in this case I did a title build for this just a quick um, just a quick uh, animation for the title and then here's footage so this was a three-day conference we shot on the 17th the 18th and the 19th of this year of 2022 I shot everything on red as you can see everything comes in subfolders when you're in red uh, unfortunately that's just the way their file structures are but what's nice is you can tell this is a slow-mo clip and I also get the audio that comes along with it so um, this was on 217 218 I organized it by card so 217 was one card I didn't need to have multiple card subfolders but 218 every time I made a dump I created a different card okay so card one card two card three and on uh, 219 well usually what happens on the last day is I'm finishing up the final edit so they can play it for the last thing but we did one final shot that goes into the end of the video that they played on social media so uh, that's where my footage folder and that's what it looks like sequences we start with a content cut then we have our various different cut versions and then I made a 60 second version that fits on Instagram we did our interviews, we did our session clips. So let's start with content cut, okay? We're gonna open this up. The important thing, the important thing about content cuts are if you don't do them, you're gonna miss a lot of footage. What I mean by that is basically how I do a content cut is I'll come through and grab a shot from card one and I'm gonna scrub through this shot and say, okay, that's a pretty good shot. Here's my in, here's my out. We've got a shot of our signage. Boom, perfect. And I'll drag it down. Boom, there it is. Okay, it's in our content cut sequence. So when I'm scrubbing through and I need to find a shot or a specific shot I have everything separated so these are various different segments that I have separated I usually separate them a lot of times I'll color code them like I did here at the very beginning but in this instance I started editing everything all at once so I just I just forego the uh, color code method and went straight to editing it but I, I separate it by session so that I can go back and find where it is pretty easily and if it was a if it was a clip that I thought was just a real banger I bring it up here to the top to make sure hey I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that clip uh, and part in the really dark footage it was a very very dark room so I'm shooting on red which isn't the best in low light but we did pretty all right for what we were trying to do um, so that's basically how I do that in my content cut and then I'll go into the interviews I don't like to delete anything off of these clips just because you never know the client could come back and say I remember when so-and-so said this about this and if you deleted it out of here then it's harder to find later you can always go back into the original source footage but um, it's easier just to have it in a nice sub timeline like this and then what we'll do here is session clips and unfortunately uh, this the footage from these sessions weren't the greatest <laughs> uh, as you can see but what I'll do is I'll go through the entire session and I'll be listening for great audio sound bites of what I want to get and put into the video next is our tracks and I got my tracks from Soundstripe it's a very useful place to have tracks that are kinda in this vibe here now my stuff is still loading it's still trying to cache these files out so you're not gonna see waveforms on it yet but that brings me to my first cut so my first cut well right now it looked like this I had an idea of how I wanted things to go and I was bringing in audio that I just it wasn't quite selling it and um, 
So what I did was rather than just completely start from scratch, I duplicated my sequence, which is always a smart move because that way I can go back to number one, even though there's not a whole lot here, but these were all the audio clips that I really loved from the session and also I believe from my interviews. So that was my cut one. Cut two ends up looking like this and it's a lot closer to a final what I did and this is how I organized my timeline and you can see um, just how I organize my timeline here. Oh, let's get back over there. Usually my audio bed lays out here and I'll start with an audio bed and a soundbite bed and the soundbite bed and audio bed. Basically my, my process for this is if I can close my eyes and the video sounds amazing, then everything else is going to be put together super, super easily. Here's my soundbite bed. Here's my audio bed. These are my sound effects that just kind of sell a moment here when she kind of landed a little drop the mic moment, you know. And um, as I said, this is still cashing out, but you'll see all of my little ups and downs and, and mixing uh, elements that I did here. And this next row here, this row, this is all my B-roll. As you can see, just a bunch of B-roll. A lot of it's in time with the music. And keeping your sequence organized this like this allows you to make quick and smooth edits, especially when you're doing a recap video and they're playing it the very next day in the session. You want to make sure that you can access, you find these files. If you're stacked, I've seen timelines where they're stacked all over the place and it just, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially if the client wants me to go back and take out a clip that they didn't like or uh, re-edit a soundbite. It's just easier to keep everything the way it needs to be for me, nice and neat. So I got my soundbite, I got my music bed, I've got my sound effects down here. And I've got my B-roll here. And then right here, these rows are reserved for effects. So um, right now, I've downloaded from Envato. Envato, to me, is a very important resource. But these are some really cool transitions that just kind of help sell some of the video. And then I did the little title um, animation to get everything into there. Uh, a quick black video that kind of darkened to make the the um, logo pop for a second and then I added the logo here that was the very top thing that I did add a little logo there it's a nice touch to um, kind of brand your video a little bit and then we'll come over here to the final shot and that's where we ended well actually cut three is where we ended we ended with this guy um, which was our wide shot which was the final day shot that I grabbed um, and that's what I added into that last day. But this is my process. This is what my timeline looks like for an event recap. And this is my process to get it done fast and efficiently. And when you're doing an event recap, fast and efficient is always key. If you have a process that works for you and it's just a little bit different, leave a comment down below. I'd love to read about it. But this is a process that's worked for me that allows me to get things done super efficient. Until next time, keep creating. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but if you do the work today, what unfolds tomorrow will blow your mind. I want you to stop letting all the shiny things and all the pebbles run your life. Start with what's important and actually build your lives around what matters most. Well, I'm excited to be back here. This is probably like my fourth or fifth Optivia event, and I needed a boost. We all think we have unique struggles, but to hear everybody talking, it really just is inspiring. This is my first time at Ignite, and I definitely will say it's lit a fire under my tail. This Ignite conference has been amazing. I am on fire. I'm so inspired by all the speakers, and it's been such an honor to get to share my story, too. This community is amazing. We've had a full day of training. Could not be more excited for what's going to happen with all these 700 attendees, seeing how their businesses are going to be impacted. Healthy minds, healthy bodies, healthy finances.
the combination of having a dream and having a vision, it takes the two to marry. This opportunity that we have with Octavia is like no other. There are things that you guys have been through that you've grown through, you've gotten stronger through. You have scars now from those battle wounds and there are people that you see having those same struggles. You can reach in and you can help pull them out and that makes all of that struggle worth it. I had to stop asking people who had never been where I was going for directions. Just being here, there really is a fire that's awakened when you're in community. My biggest impact being here is the fact that we're all together. It's a huge community. You learn from all the mentors and excitement that comes with being at an event like this. When you have a vision, it can come true. I'm talking the crazy, stupid, audacious, everybody else is gonna laugh at you kind of dreams because with that vision, you're gonna set this world on fire.